powers that be that are a victory thing, but the right. same- probably got a little bit more. T- so right now they said at 85. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and Ken Palm, um, in the but Kevin Keats all, area, like, that is, uh, right near the top one or two spot. Um, if my, uh, memory serves me correctly. So the fact that he calls himself a defensive coach, um, <laughs> is hilarious to me. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> for a defensive coach to go on the road and put up that performance on top of it, it's just kind of the cherry on top. Um, you know, I, I'm not very uh, shy to, to say what it is. I, I just, I don't think he's it. And I think that everything up until this point has said it last year, he was an 82 defensive uh metric from Ken Palm's standpoint. And I'm, I'm always stay on Ken Palm. I'm never going to trust the net. Cause I think a metric that tells you to lose in your beneficiary is the dumbest metric um, that could possibly be out there. So uh, he's not really a defensive coach, not really an offensive coach. And to my argument um, to call last year's team, a bona fide tournament team, that's the same team that uh, let's be honest, kind of creep their way into a tournament win or I mean, excuse me, tournament appearance that lost three of their last four. Um, sure. They got the win over uh, North Carolina last year, <clears throat> which was, you know, nice, I, I, I guess. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to buy into this fake narrative that last year's team was electric. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this team's metrics. They're nine wins. Like I said, on the last episode, uh, they've got one, two, three wins inside the top 11 teams that are currently standing in the ACC. Uh, it goes back to my point of fool's gold. You beat you beat up on bad teams. You lose to good teams. Um, it, it's, it, it just is want, what it is. I've wanted him. Um, it's no, like, I, you're fine. You're fine. I, I think from my yeah. standpoint, my first time, you know, that was my first time being in the media room. I was there for that. Yeah. Um, that, that horrible season that was, okay. I saw the unlucky patterns. I saw from my own point of view of how unlucky that season was. Okay. I'm I'm not going to dispute that argument of, Hey, look, he got the shit into the stick and that's fine. Right. Um, but we are also in year seven and I'm tired of excuses. And if you can't even put up a top 50 defense for a defensive quote unquote minded coach, yeah, uh, I'm I'm good on the excuses, really. I really am. Um, for his last year, I'll I'll put this to test. Okay, I think last year's team was his most top end talented team. I think that was probably his best team that he put together, and it was still a fringe tournament team who really fizzled out t- towards the end. Um, so I, I'm good on the excuses. I think you can maybe put the excuses to that one specific season, but outside of that, I think results matter, and I think facts are facts are facts. And I don't think that he's produced in his time here. That's why I question why people are so overtly positive uh, towards a experience that has been nothing but negative or average at at best. The I don't know. I scored eighty. I'm gonna say this, and and I've said it a couple of times. This season is about perspective. Sure, DJ Horns is getting his, and you know he had what. Uh, 27 in that game winner uh it, it took a a performance of, of no other from dj horn to be close in that game that you have over the past couple of years have been dominated in um i just don't i don't think clemson played their best ball i, I think they've shown that they can dominate well, you year in a, year in a year out but right but that's that's an anomaly and that goes back to my point of casey morsell that's why this this roster just um excuse me Laptop's about to die. Uh, that's that's why, like, I, I think that Case Morcel is a fourth option on any offense given. I, I just that's why he. Fi-